Hey everyone, um, welcome to the Contour Ingress Controller session. So let's do a round of intros first. Uh, we've tried to get pretty much all the maintainers for the project here. So um, I'm Alex Xu. I'm a product manager at VMware in the Modern Applications Business Unit. Uh, I'm the product lead for Contour. Uh, over to you, Nick. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Nick Young. Uh, I'm the uh, tech lead on Contour. I'm a staff engineer at VMware. Uh, over to you, Steve Sloka. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, hey, I'm Steve. Uh, I work for VMware. I've been working on Contour since almost its inception. Uh, so nice to see y'all. Pass it off to Daniel. Uh, Daniel Hansen, Principal Software Engineer with uh, with Red Hat, and um, excited to talk more about what we're doing with Contour. Steve, Chris. Hey everyone, I'm Steve Chris. I'm an engineer at VMware and I'm a maintainer on Project Contour. I'll hand it over to Sanjay. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Sanjay Bhatia, uh, engineer at VMware as well and working on the Contour team. Thanks everyone. Um, yeah, so let me just kick it off here with what is Contour and what we're all about. So Contour is the ingress controller for your Kubernetes cluster, um, which means that it's a piece of software that you have to install into your Kubernetes environment in order to leverage ingress. Um, ingress is a Kubernetes concept. It's one of the preferred ways to bring external traffic into your Kubernetes environment. You might have heard of service type node port or load balancer. Ingress is just one of the options. So we are built around another really popular open source project called Envoy. Uh, so Contour is the control plane for Envoy, which is acting as a data plane. And the Envoy instance, which is deployed by and configured and managed by Contour, is essentially functioning as a reverse proxy and a layer seven load balancer. Um, and the communication back and forth between Contour and Envoy are all protected by mutual TLS. So there are a lot of ingress controllers on the market today. And the purpose of this session is to just highlight why you might want to use Contour, given some of the things that we're working on, given our roadmap, um, our extremely prolific roadmap, and some of the thought leadership around Ingress that we are involved in. So if there's something here that you don't quite understand or you have needs around Ingress that are not being captured in Contour today, please reach out to us in, in GitHub, in Slack, through email. Uh, we're always wanting to hear more. So if I may, um, I just want to highlight some of the most compelling features in Contour today. So we support dynamic configuration updates. This is driven largely by how Contour functions as a control plane for Envoy. Uh, we have a very strong focus on multi-team ingress delegation or multi-tenant ingress. Um, what this means is that basically the behavior of how traffic lands into different applications in your cluster or different subdomains, all of the domain can all be customized by different personas. So your Kubernetes cluster admin can set some basic rules on how traffic arrives at your cluster and then each team can further customize the behavior of that request once it lands in your part of the application. Uh, Contour is very lightweight. You know, we leverage pretty much just pure uh, Kubernetes objects. So we create a bunch of cluster roles and spin up a bunch of CRDs. There's no additional software or licensing here. There's no proprietary or paid version of Contour with more functionalities. Um, of course, we can do TLS termination and pass through. There's HTTP to HTTPS redirection. There's also session affinity. There's all kinds of low balancing options available to you. And you can also modify head request headers as well. Uh, next slide, please. So you've probably seen this slide before um, in previous KubeCons, but we are already on version 1.14. We release monthly, so you can always expect a pretty stable build, very fluid release management and lots of contributors. And in the last couple of releases, you know, we've really been focusing on a couple of things. External auth, so your incoming requests can be secured against an auth server. We've added local as well as global rate limiting. Uh, we've also added a support for ingress class resource, which was released as part of the Kubernetes 1.18. And we are adding support for Gateway API, which is a new Kubernetes networking sig project that is attempting to re-architect not just ingress, but a very large broad set of requirements around dynamically sourcing network infrastructure. So you can think of ingress class as ingress v1 and ingress and gateway API as ingress v2 and contour has coverage for both. So please stick around to learn about how we're actually supporting gateway API. And with that, I'll hand it off to Steve Stoka now. Thanks Alex. Uh, uh, 
like Alex touched on a little bit at the beginning, um, some architecture overview components of how Contour is put together. Uh, this slide here will help you dig in a little further into what that looks like you know, with, with some, some, some graphs. Uh, so again, Contour is typically deployed uh, as an edge proxy. So the goal is to route traffic from outside of your cluster into your cluster. Um, here you can see we have traffic from the internet hitting some sort of load balancer. And that load balancer then targets a set of envoys. So depending on your environment, you can deploy one or more envoys in your fleet, uh, again, to route traffic. So Envoy is our data path component. Its job is to actually route traffic from point A to point B within your cluster. Contour's job is to be the control plane server. Uh, so Contour implements an XDS server. An XDS is an Envoy type protocol, which lets us configure Envoy dynamically. And Contour and Envoy talk over a gRPC connection. So again, that's a rich data connection so we can pass updates quickly and easily. So Contour's job is to watch the cluster for resources. So to look for things like services, for endpoints, secrets, ingress objects, all kinds of different things within your cluster. When any of those things change, Contour will rebuild a configuration and it'll pass those changes down to Envoy. When the next request comes in, Envoy will, will be able to process that request and route traffic into your cluster, uh, however you see fit. Again, so typically this is, this is an edge proxy. This can also be done for internal routing as well. So here you wouldn't have this external traffic, you would just have internal traffic routing as well. But again, the uh, generic example is, is how this is works with um, Envoy and Contour working together you know, to help route your traffic. So I'll pass it off to Sanjay next to talk about uh, the next thing. Uh, so as Alex mentioned, alluded to a little while ago, um, we've got some new features that we've been working on in, in Contour. Um, uh, those include uh, rate limiting support, so ability to set um, per envoy uh, request rate limits, uh, as well as uh, integration with a uh, rate limit service to um, for you to be able to more granularly control your rate limiting uh, uh, requests to your applications um, across uh, a full deployment. Um, we're starting work on uh, and getting initial alpha support on gateway APIs, a new um, uh, API that the, the SIG network group is, is working on in Kubernetes. Um, we're trying to round out uh, the Ingress v1 support, so supporting all of the various features uh, in terms of filtering ingresses using ingress classes, various types of path matching, and uh, other, other uh, in features of Ingress v1. And also we're uh, working on a project that we have called the Contour Operator which is an operator for uh, Contour that is currently in the alpha state. Yeah, so let's talk more about uh, Gateway API. Uh, so Gateway API is an open source uh, project that was uh, established around 2019, um, actually from KubeCon San Diego 2019. Um, and is managed by SIG Network. Uh, it defines a collection of resources uh, to model service networking in Kubernetes. And so uh, what are some of those resources? Um, to, to cover them real quickly, you've got uh, Gateway Class, which is a cluster scoped resource uh, that defines infrastructure. There's a gateway resource that defines an instance of the infrastructure. The infrastructure being a load balancer, um, or a proxy in the case of Contour, and that, of course, that proxy being Envoy proxy. Uh, and going back very quickly with the Gateway class is it really represents an abstraction of the details of the infrastructure. And so, as you see here in this uh, diagram, uh, the different resources map to different roles and, and, and the role orientation or of, um, of Gateway API is one of the benefits of the API. Uh, if we look at um, existing resources prior to Gateway API, like the ingress resource, uh, there is no concept of uh, having different roles to express how a, an application and the infrastructure um, is modeled for service networking. Um, and so one of the last pieces of the uh, resources uh, represented uh, by Gateway API are routes. Um, the most common is the HTTP route, as you see in this diagram. And the HTTP route uh, represents how an application developer uh, would model advanced routing 
for example, uh, sending a certain percentage of traffic to one service over the other. Um, and that's just a quick summary of the different resources that make up uh, Gateway API. Uh, we, we first introduced Gateway API support in 1.13. Uh, that the, was introduced as alpha. It's still an alpha, so uh, still very new. Um, still have a long road ahead to go with this, but uh, this at least gives users an opportunity to kind of kick the tires with Gateway API, uh, provide feedback not only to us, but also the Gateway API community. Uh, and we're looking forward uh, to get that feedback and excited to, to have Gateway API as part of Contour. All right, thanks, Daniel. And now I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about Contour's support for rate limiting, which is uh, a feature, or a series of features, really, that we've added uh, progressively over the last few Contour releases. Um, and so, rate limiting fundamentally is about uh, defining policies for how much traffic is is allowed to reach your backend services in a given period of time. Um, and there are, you know, a number of different reasons why you might want to have uh, control over this and have enforcement of this. Um, so, a few examples are are for protection against uh, denial of service attacks uh, from malicious actors where um, other folks are trying to overwhelm your backend services with, with extraneous requests. Uh, it might be useful for enforcing uh, usage quotas for different categories of users for your services. Um, can also be useful for protecting against uh, uh, bugs in client applications that uh, create unintended traffic. So lots of different uh, reasons why it's useful and um, it's, it's definitely a really valuable tool to have in your toolbox. Uh, and so we're, we're happy to have support for it in Contour now. Um, and so Envoy and, and by extension Contour support uh, kind of two main modes of rate limiting. Um, so they're called global and local rate limiting. And the, the terminology really comes from the fact that, uh, you know, usually when you deploy Envoy, uh, you're not just going to have a single instance of Envoy. You typically are going to have a kind of a fleet of Envoys. Uh, multiple instances that are running. And so if you're, if you're running a service mesh, you might have an Envoy sidecar per workload. Um, or if you're in an ingress scenario like you are with Contour, you're probably going to have a daemon set or a, a deployment that has multiple instances of Envoy. And so then the question with rate limiting is really um, when you're making a rate limiting decision, is it taking into account all of the traffic that's coming into all of those Envoy instances, which would be kind of a, a global rate limiting decision, or is the decision made locally by an individual Envoy uh, just based on uh, the traffic that that Envoy has seen coming in without any uh, coordination with other Envoys. Um, so that in a nutshell is kind of the difference between the two approaches. Um, like I said, Envoy supports both and Contour supports both. Um, the key operational difference is that with global rate limiting, um, you, the user, are required to deploy a, a separate external rate limit service uh, that's responsible for making those rate limit decisions. Uh, and then each envoy within your envoy fleet is going to be communicating with that external service, uh, providing some information about requests coming in uh, and getting rate limit decisions back. Uh, and then global also provides you some additional flexibility in terms of how you rate limit. So you're, you're able to rate limit by things like the client IP and, and header values on requests uh, and various other things. Whereas local rate limiting uh, is pretty simple and basically just allows you to, to limit the total number of requests that hit a backend service uh, through any particular Envoy instance. And so just to, to dig into the global rate limiting architecture a little bit more since, since there are some more moving pieces there. Um, what you see here, uh, first of all, in the center in the, the purple box is, is Envoy. And then on the bottom, we have the, the rate limit service. So uh, as I mentioned on the previous slide, this is something that you as a user would have to deploy yourself. Um, Envoy publishes a, a gRPC interface that uh, the rate limit service is required to adhere to. Um, but as long as your implementation uh, meets that interface, you can use whatever implementation you want. Uh, there is an, an open source rate limit implementation that's published as, uh, as part of the Envoy GitHub organization. Uh, so that's definitely an option for you, but you're not tied into it by any means. Uh, and so then on the top in, the, in blue, we have Contour and Contour is, is kind of made aware of the existence of the rate limit service through an extension service custom resource. Um, and this is a, a part of the Contour API that we introduced as part of the external auth work last year. 
Uh, and so this tells Contour that the rate limit service exists and should be configured with Envoy. And then each of your HTTP proxies within Contour can optionally define uh, a global rate limit policy, which essentially uh, says that information about requests for that proxy should be sent to the rate limit service and the rate limit service should then return a, a rate limiting decision uh, back to the user. And so Envoy then as it's processing requests coming in, uh, will reach out to that rate limit service, provide the information about the request, uh, and then uh, based on the decision that the rate limit service makes, either allow the request to proceed to the backend service uh, or return a, uh, an error code to the user. So with that, I'd, I'd like to jump into a quick demo of global rate limiting. Uh, so let me switch over to my terminal here. So uh, first of all, I'm, I have a cluster here that's running a uh, three node cluster. Give it a second. So I have a three node cluster here and let's take a, a quick look at what's in the project contour namespace. Uh, get pods. And so you'll see I have my two contour pods as part of my replica set. Uh, and then I have an Envoy daemon set, so one Envoy per uh, node. Uh, and then additionally, I have this rate limit pod here. And this is part of the, uh, the rate limit service that I have deployed into my cluster. Um, and then let's just take a look at the contour uh, config map. And this is where uh, you as a, as a Contour user would tell Contour about the existence of the rate limit service. And so you can see, I just have a simple YAML block here that defines the rate limit service. Um, it identifies the extension service that, uh, that kind of maps to that rate limit service and provides some additional parameters for that rate limit service. Um, and then the next thing I wanna take a look at is uh, the config file for uh, the rate limit service itself. And this is where the actual rate limits are defined. Uh, and so I'm not gonna get into the details of the exact configuration format here. This is specific to the, uh, the Envoy rate limit service, but if you have a different implementation, your config format would look a little bit different. Uh, but the, the important thing I wanna point out here is that we have two different rate limits defined. So the first one here, you can see that there's a five requests per hour rate limit, and that's defined for each remote address, uh, which is effectively the client IP. So this is saying that each client IP can have five uh, requests per hour. Uh, and then the second one is, is similar. So it's a two requests per hour limit, um, but it's saying that um, if this, essentially if this header value here is present, so if X contour rate limit, uh, is defined on the request with the value of true, then only two requests per hour should be allowed. So basically, if the header's present, you should get two requests per hour, and then in total, each client should get five requests per hour. And so uh, the last thing I wanna show just before I um, start issuing some requests uh, really quickly here is the actual HTTP proxy I have defined. Um, and I just want to focus kind of on the, the rate limit policy. So this is a new part of the, uh, the HTTP proxy API. And so you can see here that I have a global rate limit uh, policy defined. And again, I'm not going to uh, walk through this in excruciating detail, but this is basically telling Contour and Envoy that uh, for any requests coming into this particular virtual host, uh, we should send the client IP to the rate limit service and then if this header exists on the incoming request, we should send that to the rate limit service as well. So what I'll do now is, is uh, demonstrate those rate limits being enforced. So the first thing I wanna do is, um, is use that two request per hour rate limit. And so if you'll remember, um, basically if this header is, is present on the request, we should only be allowed two requests per hour. So I'm gonna issue my first request here and we can see we got a, a 200 response. Everything worked okay. We got a, a response from my echo server. And so I'll do one more request and we see we get another 200. And so now I've issued my two requests. So this next one uh, should be rate limited. And so we get a 429, which is a, a too many requests response. Um, and you can see a number of headers here that describe some information about the, uh, the rate limiting that's taking place. Um, and tells you that it's, it's been rate limited. Um, but we know that 
uh, if we don't have the header, we should be allowed uh, five total requests per hour. Now I've already issued three requests and those have counted against this, uh, this additional five requests per hour quota. So I should be able to issue a couple more requests here where I get a 200. There's another 200. And now I believe on this one, I should get rate limited because I've now issued a total of six, re six requests from this client IP. So hopefully that gives you a feel for, uh, for what global rate limiting looks like in, in Contour and Envoy. There are uh, many more knobs and many more ways to configure this that I don't have time to get into, uh, but definitely check out the docs and, and uh, play around some more if you're interested. And with that, I'll flip back to the slides and hand it off to Nick. Hi everyone. Um, so I'm uh, talking about the uh, roadmap today. So we've got, you can see here that there's a few, uh, bi this is the bigger items on our roadmap. Um, our whole roadmap is public uh, and it's published in our community repo. Um, there's a link in the slides if you can see it, but if not, it's uh, github.com slash project contour slash community. Uh, and then there's a roadmap.md file. Um, <clears throat> so the, uh, the first thing we've got here is um, we want to bring, we want to uh, get our operator uh, up to scratch. We want to get it uh, you, all the way to GA, um, obviously. We to make it beta first. Uh, it's currently alpha. Um, in my mind, uh, you know, I think uh, we've talked a little bit about this. You, a large part of the, the things that we need to graduate to GI, um, the biggest feature that we need to do that is uh, support, for, support for upgrades. Um, the operator is intended to help you operate Contour. That means it helps you install Contour. It helps you make sure that it's uh, that it upgrades to the latest version, uh, and it should do that upgrade in a safe way for you, so that you don't you don't have to encode the knowledge of how to do a safe Contour upgrade into your deployment tooling. The operator can do it for you. Um, as part of that, um, we also want to, or and a little bit associated with that, um, we want to expand the gateway API support. We want to make sure that we bring that um, to as production ready as we can make it. Obviously with the uh, gateway API still being an alpha API, there's a limit to how uh, far we can take that uh, until it moves up. Uh, it's the production readiness chain itself. But I think that uh, we should be able to get good support for you know, the basic sort of workflow um, and the two route types that we support being a HTTP route and TLS route. Um, they should, we should be able to get those in in a reasonably timely way, like you know, in a few months, hopefully. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for anyway. Um, the next one's a bit, there's a, the next one I wanted to mention here is we've definitely had some uh, issues with this in the past. Um, Contour currently has two options for um, the code that actually handles XDS. So XDS is the, uh, the control plane protocol that Envoy uses uh, to talk to its control plane. So if you are deploying an Envoy in your cluster, you are running a control plane. It may be a static control plane from a file, but if you're running any of the other uh, products that use Envoy, um, they provide an Envoy control plane. Um, currently Envoy uh, Contour supplies two options for that. Um, there's our own sort of organically homegrown, uh, slightly, slightly elderly implementation. Uh, and there is one based on the uh, upstream Go control, Go control plane implementation. Um, the uh, sort of homegrown one, it is aging, as I said, um, there's been a few advances in uh, the XDS code that we haven't had a chance to build out yet. Um, things supporting things like incremental XDS um, and the uh, ADS, um, anything discovery service basically, and a few other uh, things there. And the reason to do those is that it should help when, when you're running a large uh, Contour installation uh, and we have heard from people who are running thousands of HTTP proxies that Envoy can use an awful lot of memory in that case uh, and we're hoping that by modernizing the XDS code we should be able to help a lot with that. And the last thing that's on the roadmap that we you know always intend to keep uh, pushing along with is the further feature work. Um, so some of the ones that we've got uh, in train we've got some work for uh, ALS which is uh, Envoy's uh, automatic logging service um, so you can configure a, a remote logging service to have Envoy send all of its logs to. Um, but then also there's a few things like tracing and other stuff that's well requested features that have been around for a while. The requests have been around for a while and we are now sort of just working our way down to getting to them. Um, so yeah, with that, I think I've, I've hit as much as I can in the time that I have. Uh, I'd love to take more questions about this at some other time. Um, but over to you, Alex, for, to sum up. Yeah, um, 
Okay, uh, I just wanted to also add that we're also working on uh, Windows support in, in our roadmap, right? Um, as well as making sure that Contour can deploy onto IPv6 clusters. Um, and so these are the two big ones. Um, Thank you, Alex, for uh, doing your PM job and, uh, and making yeah. sure that I hit those things. <laughs> um, um, and also uh, FIPS compliance, right, which is a lot, a lot of customers have requirements, um, open source users, community members, as well as customers have requirements around delivering um, FIPS 140-2 compliant Im images. So uh, making sure that Contour works using a specific set of TLS cipher suites. So all of these are coming. Um, yeah, the last thing is the community. The community is doing really well, as everyone can see. Um, so we're at 2.7K GitHub stars. Um, we have really um, lots of contributors, 450 forks. Um, we have maintainers from VMware, from Red Hat, um, and we're you know taking a very active position in driving the design for the Gateway API project upstream. Um, so a few ways to reach out to us. You can reach, to, reach out to us on Slack in the Kubernetes channel. Um, you can also follow our Twitter account, uh, find us on GitHub at Project Contour, and watch some of our community meetings as well as office hours on YouTube. So um, yeah, if you guys have any questions about you know Contour the project, if you're, like, like I said earlier, right, if there are needs around ingress um, that are not being met today in Contour, definitely reach out to us so we can discuss them. Anything else from, from anyone else? I guess I'd just like to say thanks to everybody who's contributed in the last few months since we last gave an update. Um, it's been amazing to uh, see such great uh, contributions from the community. Uh, it's been really great to, to bring Daniel on board as a maintainer that's not from VMware. Um, and to just start getting a lot more uh, external contributions. So as a tech leader of Contour, I tip my hat to the community. I'm not actually wearing one, but you know what I mean. Um, and yeah, just thanks thanks to the community for uh, everything we're doing. And uh, we're really excited to see where we go from here. So I think uh, we're going to move to some questions. Uh, and hopefully, we'll uh, talk to you soon. Thanks for attending, everyone.